Today's video is going to focus on subsistence agriculture. Um, even though we're going to make some reference to commercial agriculture, um, the real focus is going to be on subsistence agriculture. So some terms and concepts that you should be very familiar with and should be able to define and explain after watching this video are subsistence agriculture, commercial agriculture, shifting cultivation, slash and burn agriculture, um, pastoral nat nomadism, nomadism, intensive subsistence agriculture, and plantation agriculture. Okay, so looking at this real briefly, um, just to give a, a, a brief outline or general under, understanding of s the difference between subsistence and commercial agriculture um, is simply that uh, subsist subsistence agriculture is a production of food primarily um, for s consumption. That it's produced with the idea that it's meant basically for survival or for to better the, those who are, are growing it. Commercial agriculture is where the majority, if not all, of the production is going to be sold um, off the farm. And that's uh, a, a, the most primary and, and significant, significant difference. Um, and generally, you're going to see that in the more developed countries. So just a quick comparison. We'll, do, we'll explore this a little bit more um, in class. But in uh, lesser developed countries, or LDCs, we're going to see predominantly um, subsistence agriculture. Um, in fact, subsistence agriculture um, is about a quarter of the world's population um, survives on subsistence agriculture. Um, very small farms generally, 1.7 acres, um, compared to almost 500 acres com in commercial um, agricultural countries. And when we talk about hand farmed, it's, it's more labor intensive. Um, maybe there's use of beasts of burden or animals, but uh, in com commercial agriculture we're seeing way more mechanization or the use of machinery, equipment, tractors, etc. Before we can really look at those, though, however, we should just make some reference to the climate, that climate um, very much shapes the types of agricultures we see throughout the world. So looking at the different tr uh, climates throughout the world, when we look at the types of agriculture that are practiced, you, if you take a moment to look at this, you'll see some very strong um, correlations there. Now, you might see some variations based on the actual landforms, but generally speaking, you see some very common practices based on climate. So just if you were to take a moment to pause the video, you should take uh, be able to acknowledge what are some common um, uh, practices or uh, depending on climate. So in a dry desert climate, for example, um, or the bee climate, what kind of practices do, do you generally see? Or in um, continent warm mid-latitude or cold mid-latitude climates, what are the practices you see? Um, or tropical, the, the A climates, humid low latitude. Um, what are the practices you might see? This is something you should take note of. Okay, looking at practice, subsistence practices, you'll notice I, there'll be a couple different global maps here. This map re reflects the subsistence practices throughout the world. Um, and we're going to be going through these different types here in this rest of this video. And so, given the amount of in, in, uh, uh, content we have to cover. I know I'll be moving fast. You might have to pause the video and go back. Commercial practices, you'll notice this is very, you know, re representing areas not shown in the last image. Um, and you'll also remember, you know, from what we've talked about, this reflects those LDCs, North America, Western Europe, Australia, um, being very common places where we find commercial practices. So, um, making another reference to this, um, is the agricultural workers. You'll notice that subsistence agriculture, because it's based on um, survival, basically it's what is produced is consumed, you'll notice that it then reflects the number of agricult agricultural workers or, or for the percentage of agricultural wor workers in these different areas of the world. Noticing again, Western Europe, the United States, Australia, very low percentage um, in the LDCs, um, Central Africa, for, per, for example, or Southeast Asia, you see that as well. You see the opposite effect. So, in looking at these com comparatively, um, there's some very distinct things we can look at. What's the purpose, whether it's consumption or for sale, as we looked at that already. Uh, what is the percentage of farmers that are be you find in, the, in a particular country or region? Um, how, do they use machinery? How big is the farm? And what is the farm, you know, how is farming used relative to other businesses? And we'll, we'll touch on that in plantation agriculture. Defining subsistence agriculture, um, as we have already, is that it's low LDCs, primarily LDCs. Uh, most of the food is used for consumption. 
um, and we oftentimes find subsistence agriculture in more tropical regions um, and we'll talk more about shifting agriculture in the next slide and, and there are, but there are many forms in that that is the most common uh, I'm sorry is a common form of it but it is not the most common we'll get to that again later in the slides um, when we look at shifting agriculture it's a cyclical pattern in which natural vegetation is slashed, burned down, and the, what remains is what's called a swidden, which is very, um, uh, which essentially fertilizes the land and makes it very productive for a short period of time. Um, this is where um, subsistence agriculture is used for some sort of, um, of harvest, and eventually, the if if left alone, it can regenerate and then can be re this cycle can be repeated. However, oftentimes that's not the case and the land actually becomes useless as the quality of the soil erodes. Here's an example of that actually being done, um, that slash and burn technique where the land, the natural vegetation is being cleared um, and which will eventually become um, more used for subsistence or commercial farmland. This slash and burn technique is most commonly found in tropical cli climates where you see very um, shallow but very fertile topsoil. Um, that is used and then in, 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 can be depleted very quickly. Um, and again, it's only used a few years at a time. And, and again, and, and the type of crops you might see are going to vary based on those factors that we looked at before, the cultural um, uh, factor preferences or the, what vegetation might grow, the, the physical uh, characteristics of the, of the particular place. This also is a, traditionally not something that land is owned individually. It may be owned as a collective or it actually might be rented um, intended to by the people that survive or use it for their survival and that, again lending to that subsistence nature. So looking again at where we would find this, note, note where you'd uh, in this particular instance where you would note uh, shifting agriculture throughout the world. You might want to take a pause the video um, and just kind of review that. Pastoral nomadism is the, sec the next one we'll look at, another type of subsistence agriculture um, which is uh, herding domesticated animals and following them as they uh, feed. Now this again is going to be in regions where the land maybe isn't productive or is fertile, uh, it can't support large uh, herds of livestock and so they must continue to move. Uh, this also re generally reflects that it's not able to support areas where it's not able to support huge population, human populations as well. And so we find this in usually in semi-arid or desert climates um, again, the food is, is the, the herding is, is done for as a, a, a form of livestock production. It is not necessarily eaten. Um, there's often prestige or power or wealth equated to the size of the herd. Uh, the, there's usually some byproduct that the herds use, the, maybe the milk or the, um, if, the, if it's certain animals where the, their coats are used, like sheep um, or uh, for um, cloth or textiles. Uh, Sometimes even the manure is used as fuel. So again, depending on where you're gonna, where you are, you're gonna find different animals being um, tended to. So here's just an example of coming out of Africa. Um, you see goats. Uh, another region, another part of Africa, you see um, livestock. If you go to the Middle East, you often see uh, 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 sheep. Is another example. So again, where would we see pastoral uh, uh, nomadism? Again, looking at those dry, arid climates, very common, or in the highlands of, say, Mongolia or Central Asia, where agriculture isn't as uh, uh, successful, you find that there. And note, you don't really see it in the United States or North America. Third type of subsistence agriculture is uh, intensive subsistence agriculture. Now, this is basically where we see high population densities. This, these tend to be very high labor intensive um, crop productive uh, uh, practices. Uh, the most common one that we make associate with this is the is rice production in particular because it happens in a place where it is the dominant crop um, in Asia, mostly East and South in Southeast Asia. And it's incredible that, that in, given the population density, land is at a premium, let alone fertile land. And so it is used, um, uh, any land that is used for farming is ma maximized for production. 
Uh, and again, just making it, so here's a, a reference to where we see rice production, which aligns with what we were just mentioning on the last um, slide, um, that you see the, the, the production is significantly skewed in, in the region of East Asia. Uh, but you can see this is a very labor-intensive type of farming. And uh, this is some workers working in rice paddy in Asia. Um, and here's how m the land, so even in land where it isn't necessarily um, what we would say prime agricultural land, the land has been shaped, the natural landscape has been terraced uh, in order to maximize these the use of it for rice production. Uh, it can be a beautiful thing from the, from an aerial view. This is actually a National Geographic photo. Um, this is all; these are all rice paddies, and the beautiful colors you see are are just different strains of rice. Um, pretty awesome uh, art in terms of the natural landscape. Again, so you might want to pause for a moment and just kind of review where do you see intensive subsistence agriculture and again this is going to be the light green or the blue uh, it, there are different types of ri uh, rice grown and also because of the different types of climate that we'd associate um, we see that difference as well the fourth type of, of subsistence agriculture is plantation farming um, we find this again in mostly in tropical regions and almost exclusively in LDCs um, and but the product here is that this isn't for consumption opposed to where we see rice in sub intensive subsistence farming um, we see the plantation farming is um, very much uh, something that is done to for uh, the production of crops that are going to be sold to MDCs now the, that is still subsistence and that it's just it's usually meant for survival but there's a specialization for one or two crops that are often used or consumed by more developed countries: coffee, sugarcane, cotton. Um, you know, to be, name a few as being very as those primary crops that are highly valuable on a global scale, but they're not really nutritionally um, sufficient in, uh, for an individual farmer. But because of their value, uh, farmers grow that and then hopefully are able to secure their own food in other mean, using other means. Um, it's also be very labor intensive, thus um, why you might find them in uh, lesser developed countries. So, looking at again, the finally one more time, looking at plantation agriculture, you see this, um, the most popular region for this, or you see the, mo the most production, is in Central and South America. So wrapping it up, I know this is a lot of information. Um, you should be able to highlight though the f what subsistence agriculture is and the four major types shifting agriculture intensive subsistence agriculture uh, plantation agriculture and pastoral nomadism um, you should be able to identify each of those four types and generally what regions of the world you might find them um, one brief note and I'm not I believe it was in the slide but I want to make sure it I, I bring that uh, to your attention that intensive subsistence agriculture is by far the most common uh, type of agriculture that is uh, used throughout the world today. So if you have any questions or comments please bring them to class and we'll start with that tomorrow.